And I get really, um, kind of breaks my heart when I see students that don't believe me when I say, you aren't going to be able to go back and do that. You know, that needs to be done. And they will put off doing assignments until the end and think they're going to be able to turn a lot in. And I don't know if that's a policy in some of the schools, because I'll have students come to me and say, you know, I know I missed three assignments, can I turn them in now? No, you can't, because I planned this. I plan my classes, and I think most um, professors do backwards. This is where you need to be to finish this class for me to put my stamp on and say, yes, you have these skills. So they build on each other. So if you haven't done one, two, and three, you're not going to be probably successful at four, five, and six, right? And so it's not useful after seven, eight, and nine to go back and do one and four and whatever else you missed, right? It's all designed and laid out with a plan. And most of your instructors are going to explain to you that, how they connect with each other. But again, uh, like I just did an assignment for students where they jigsaw different essays, and then they come and teach them to other people in their group. So they have six different essays, right? They're all reading them, but they're responsible for their essays, so they get the main information to teach to the other students. And if they come unprepared, then they kind of let the other students down, right? Um, that's not a reason to skip class either, if you haven't been prepared, because I did find a student do that, and I think he just didn't read his essay. He could, he could have cleaned a lot from being there in the class, right? So I'm going to jump ahead to a question. I think somebody might get on attendance. I don't know if you do or not, but I think it's important to know. Attendance, you do have the option to choose going to class or not, right? You're an adult. I don't have excused versus unexcused. If you're an adult now, so if you are sick, please stay home. If you've got a funeral, that's your decision where you need to be, right? Certainly. Um, I give three absences where students, it's kind of like a free pass. I would not suggest people use it um, without a purpose. If someone's not going to be there, I expect them to email me, so I know they're not going to be there. After that, it impacts their grade, right? So, um, you know, a doctor's excuse doesn't matter, right? Don't set doctor's appointments during your class time is what I would suggest, right? But if you need to be at the doctor, you need to be. We, we, we treat you as adults, and we expect you to take that responsibility and behave like adults then, right? And that's why, again, I'm not going to decide for you whether that's excused or unexcused. I'm going to assume that if you take it, it would be something I would have excused because you made, you know, you made a conscious thought about that. But attendance is really, really essential whether your instructor has policy or not. When you see the syllabus, read the syllabus. I like the syllabus. Ask questions about it. That's our contract with our students and all the policies are in there. Right? And sometimes I'll have students uh, make choices that are clearly um, identified in the syllabus as something they are not to do, right? So make sure that you're aware of all of your instructor's policies. If you have certain issues, concerns, problems, talk to your instructors. We love to engage with our students. We have office hours. We want our students <coughs> to go by. My office is where students walk all the time, and I don't want to move unless they give me a huge window, then I might. But otherwise, because I want you to come in and talk. And your other instructors do too, but I just wanted to jump onto that one because that's important. Decide which career you wanted to pursue, and if you already went and did like the majors to do the career, but then you decided to change, why did you do that? How did you decide? Okay, so for me, it's always been a toss up between business and psychology. So I absolutely love both. So I um, actually started pursuing an accounting career here, and I got an accounting certificate. And then I realized I get so bored in accounting. So, I'm back here, I got a job as a, as a manager for a company, and I realized I love to do that. So I re realized, what do I need to keep going in this career path? And I need an MBA. So that's what solidified my choice in getting an MBA, continuing education past just a certificate. I got a little bit of a story. <laughs> I've, I've switched, <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Uh, I've switched about maybe three, four, five times maybe, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, you never get your first choice at first. I mean, at first I want to be an architect, and I thought that one was the coolest thing, just for, like making buildings, stuff like that. But then my teacher says civil engineering is something better because you help build roads, parks, stuff like that, and it just helps out the community a lot more. And for a time, I was thinking about going to college way up north, near Wisconsin. And then uh, I, I found out that I was 
just a bit pricey. So I decided to dial it back down. And my brother actually went to ECC. He was studying at the Culinary Arts Program, which is one of the best ones here at ECC, just in case. And my parents were like, you should go do a culinary arts because it's one of a more secure job because that's something that takes time and effort. So I, I talked to my advisor. They told me, you got to take this, 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 this. Uh, so that's what I did for about a year and a half until uh, I decided that like culinary arts wasn't for me. So I switched to a business major. And as soon as I did that, they gave me like a complete 180 and they were like, oh, now you have to take this, 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 and this. So that just like ruined my plans. So basically, it's, it's okay to switch majors just as long as you're happy doing what you're doing. All right, guys, we're going to try to get in a couple more questions. So I've got this young man and there may be one more. Go ahead. Um, uh, Well, all three of us are actually part of Aspire 1G. So we do that. Um, that's one of the things that we found out through business, well, as a business person, at least for me, is reaching out and talking to people. That's a big part of it. So us, by doing that, helping out with the community, <coughs> being here for you guys, and not just you, for the entire community, is something that we really like. And that's the reason why a lot of us stuck with business. Just the fact that we're helping out the community, yeah, it depends if you want to be corporate. All that, all that great stuff. It just depends on what you're happy. Um, if you are, if you don't want to work with students, then we also have Team Entrepreneur. There's a lot of camp. There's a lot of clubs here on campus that will pique your interest and and will guide you to what you want to do. So, just depends on you. Hi, uh, real quick, I want to add on to that, just how important networking is. Because um, just, it's doors that you never knew could have opened up if you just talked to someone. Take the time to figure something out. Go to events, go to a job training session. Any little thing that you can do is important outside of class. Other questions? Yes, sir. What are your family feel about going to college? They forced me, just kidding. <laughs> uh, in all honesty, they were actually pretty happy with me going to college. Uh, I'm actually a first generation college student, so nobody in my family has ever gone to college, considering that they're all in Mexico right now. And my parents, my father had a sixth grade education and he had to stop because he had to work. And my mom did finish high school and just a little bit of college, but down in Mexico. So that really didn't transfer over. So when they found out that I wanted to go to college, they were super happy. They were really supportive on my, my decision. Just to make it clear that they enforced me, it's my choice. <laughs> I think we can do one more. Or anybody else? How do you like the food in the cafeteria? <laughs> of course it comes to me. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> I've had horror stories with the cafeteria here, um, but um, we have amazing restaurants around the cafeteria. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Don't listen to the Something quick, uh, if you don't like the cafeteria food, we do have, uh, the Colonial Arts Program does open their own little restaurant. It's not that expensive. But the food's really good. Like it's better. Like it's like five star quality food. And they're open Tuesdays and Thursdays. So okay, one more thing. What do you like best about the Aspire One G Club? And what do you like best about the best thing about being in college is just. I know at the beginning I said that the freedom might sound a little scary, but it's amazing that you're able to decide your future. Because I remember back in high school, I had to take, my senior year, I had to take a, what was it called? It was, it was interior design. I was forced to take an interior design class when I knew I wanted to go into business or psych at that point. 
And I was so bored. I didn't want to do it. I was forced to do it. I did it anyways. But here, yeah, you have your gen eds and they're important. Never slack off on your gen eds because they're a foundation for everything else. But after that, I get to decide all the classes that I can take. And they all pertain to what I want to go into. Yeah, uh, again, the freedom is a lot of fun. Um, just being able to, being responsible for myself. It does sound scary, but it's a lot of fun. But we have to, we have to use that superpower, quote unquote, um, to good use because, yeah, it's like I could do a million different things. And it's a lot of fun. I, I'm never bored unless I'm not doing anything. That's truly what I'm bored. So I, I, love, I love having that freedom to do a million different things. What do I like about ECC? <laughs> I guess. I mean, just choosing your classes, choosing when you get to have them. Because, I mean, you could have a schedule where it's just Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then you could have Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays off without doing anything. Or you could just have a class on Wednesday that lasts three hours and it's only once a week. Then you could have like, the rest of the week off. So yeah, just, I don't know. I, I like having my choice in classes, basically. I love the college environment. I mean, I've been in the college environment, obviously, a lot in my life as a student. Um, but I really love my students. I love to get to know my students, engage with my students. Um, I know that most people hate Comp 1 and Comp 2 because they have to, and I'll ask if I have an English major in there, and usually not, not a popular major, I guess. Um, but you know what, when I get a chance to really get to know my students and really uh, work with them, that is, I am on top. I can use uh, And I help them overcome hurdles, and I think my coworkers are the same. They, the other professors are the same. Right? We are um, we're there because we care about our students, right? We, we want to succeed. And um, yeah, I mean, some of my best moments are when somebody who's really challenged um, comes to me and we can overcome some hurdles together. Another thing I always tell them, because I teach writing, I get to know my students on a more personal level. I think that a lot of people are able to in their classes because I can I can assign writing assignments that allow me to know you. And I'm really privileged with um, what students will confide in me. I mean, I feel that yes, I feel very privileged. By that. So that's what I enjoy most. About. audience I was about to ask to give our panel a round of applause, so thank you. All right, thank you, panel. Okay, at this point, I'm going to ask you to just sit tight one moment, and we are going to prepare for uh, Professor McHugh uh, to give a biology lecture. I'm going to guess that they're going to be here. Awesome as well. So just sit tight and we'll be starting in one moment. By the computer? Because she doesn't give me too much from it. Did you, wait, you already, you already asked? Yeah. Oh, um, hey. So we have to head over to the other session. But I have a train sort of at this angle. If they move, can you just shift it to the right a little? Thanks. I swear to God, run.
the same thing, but I, I just wanted to have it as a And 
Yeah, so I wish she was that enthusiastic. We're working on it. So, eighth grade. So, 13 year old girl, that's all I have to say about that. So, but enough about me. What I want to do is talk to you about the this global drug trade. And I hopefully you enjoyed the articles that I gave you. Maybe, maybe not. The, the National Geographic article should have been fairly easy to get through, maybe not so much the more scientific article, and then there was the video. What I'm going to do is first talk to you about the coca plants, because a lot of times when people don't make the connection between cocaine and coca, and I, because I have a little bit more information than most people or more background on coca, because I spent time with my graduate research thesis um, on co the coca plant and the use of coca tea to treat altitude sickness. So I 